Robbie's childhood friend Leif, back from when they were in school together in India, came to visit us on the boat. So we nonchalantly went on a road trip through the jungle. There's a dog distracting me from driving. There's a dog whose nose is here. Heading south, past the chic bars and touristy clubs of Tulum, the road turns to dust and mud. We drove until we came to a bridge, the entry of the ocean into the Shan Khan Mangrove Lagoon. Several crocs and big ass barracudas were hanging out there at the meeting of the ocean and the lagoon waters, waiting perhaps for someone to fall in. on our random journey down the road, we said yo to a couple of other birds before reaching the small town of Punta Allen. This tight-knit community of fishermen and bio-reserve tour operators were just quietly enjoying their beautiful home and sunset, so we stretched our legs and headed right back home to our boat. We had plans to casually visit a wonder of the world the next morning. Oh, it's gonna get thick when green is gonna fall off. Oh, it's a seed. <laughs> Chichen Itza was once the largest ancient Mayan city and is now the most visited ruined site on the Yucatan Peninsula. One of the coolest aspects of this area, in my opinion, is how many people we meet who proudly identify as Mayan today. And there are currently millions of Mayan speakers here on the continent. But also the site gives us a glimpse into what life may have been like here in the jungle thousands of years ago. They really did spend some time here sacrificing people in an attempt to appease the gods. The most famous building of all, the Kukulkan Temple, was an important ceremonial structure, and there are numerous serpent head sculptures sprinkled throughout the site representing the god Kukulkan. Along with epic relief carvings depicting human, animal, and deity affairs. We've got the new art and the old art. Right next to the ceremonial platform and the temple, there is the well known ball game court, where players use their hips to knock the ball through impossibly high hoops, and they sometimes played for their lives as the ball matches were tied in with some of that ritual sacrifice. Many of the structures have been renovated throughout the years, but amazingly, pigments only hinting at what the colors may have truly been like remain. Surrounding the more cleared out, newer looking parts of the complex, the jungle is continuing to swallow up the less visited and reconstructed buildings. This unplanned visit to a place of the very old and the existing new was a great stop for these two longtime friends.
Right after the visit, our current tourist cards, otherwise known as our Mexican visas, were expiring again. Long, hot, and expensive. That's the immigration process here in Mexico. Although, we actually got it done relatively quickly. In about eight or nine hours Yeah, we, we only had to wait uh, one full day with the help of some immigration specialists who we paid lots of money to, who we paid all our money to, and we were able to walk out with our little residency cards. It's a new program or that I don't know if they're gonna continue having it, but for the time being, it allows uh, people like us, digital nomads, if you stay here for six months, uh, after the six months after your visa is up, you just go and apply for it. Now we don't have to worry about leaving the country every couple of months. So that's right? taken a little bit of weight off of our shoulders. It also means that we are finally eligible for getting vaccinated in Mexico. They won't tell us to get off the line because we are foreigners. <laughs> On my way. Maybe to get vaccinated, maybe not, we'll see. Because apparently it's very, very busy with lines around the block of all the three locations where they're giving vaccines for my, my group today. The lineup was just astounding. With only my required documents and a tiny bottle of water, I was not prepared for a full day in the blistering sun, and then possibly being turned away at the end, or having to make my way back home alone in the dark. The lineups at the two locations snaked around buildings and blocks, lining both sides of the street, with people densely packed in so that they would not get others butting in front of them. Oh, here's the end. Friday the 13th was vaccination day, but Robbie couldn't make it. He was feeling sick that morning because he was having all the symptoms. He was having a headache. We recorded a small fever on the thermometer, aches and pains in the joints. That was vaccination day for us. It didn't work out for me to get vaccinated in the end. The line was way too long. And upon returning to the boat, his symptoms were not going away. So we went to go get uh, some tests and I came out negative he came out positive a little bit perplexing considering the space we share as our home our friends and family thankfully dropped off some food supplies and we settled into another self-isolation on the boat nothing much to speak of just quarantining and isolation again but we're looking at our weather forecasts and there's a chance of a hurricane forming and coming our way. This possible, minimal little hurricane, maybe, possibly. We have no anchor, no motor. Still trying to quarantine on our boat, the morning of the incoming hurricane became a forced launch day for the precariously positioned O'Day vessel sitting next to our boat. When it finally arrived, the crane huffed and puffed and struggled to pick up the boat evenly in its straps. But surprisingly, the O'Day splashed down without bringing the truck into the water with it. And we had to go now to tend the other boats. We had promised various cruiser and fisherman friends to check on their boats for them if a hurricane was going to arrive. He's tied to these tiny little bullards.
It was late enough into the day now that ropes could be tied across the canal to keep the boats away from their docks. The harbor was officially closed and there would be no more marine traffic. The power in the neighborhood keeps on going on and off and on and off and is currently off. And we have lightning. It's like blue, purple, green. I'm becoming accustomed to the aftermath of these kinds of storms now. Although I hate to see the various trees go down every time, and we can expect to live without power and only spotty phone connection several days after each time. This time around, the coastline fared well. However, little did we know, Hurricane Grace would cross the Yucatan Peninsula and onto the other part of Mexican coast at Veracruz with more force and destruction. After losing my, my sense of taste and smell, I realized something was up. My stomach was a little funny, my appetite kind of went, I was eating and stuff seemed to stay bland. And then, and then yes, and then my friend passed by with a cigarette. Uh, I was like, I can't even smell that, so I guess that's... And uh, I found out I was positive for COVID. Being a, a person who takes his food seriously and cooking, it was a disaster and it still hasn't come back, so... It's driving me absolutely insane. Not being able to taste and smell, you know? You have stuff cooking and you can't smell what, if it's done or at what point you are in it. For me, it's very important, so. It can be dangerous. For example, today, uh, the gas ran out and uh, I guess I stopped the flame and I guess a little bit of gas was coming out and you smelled it, I didn't. So that's pretty bad. I didn't lose my sense of taste or smell at all. You didn't all. have COVID. I didn't have any symptoms. I don't think you've had it yet. I showed none of the symptoms just seen, so I don't think you've had it yet. Slowly, after I got better, after the, you know, 10, 11 days, you start getting, you know, you know first you start tasting like sweet and saltiness and sourness, and yeah, this slowly t sense of taste comes back, but it's still, still not the same, I find. Mm -hmm. 